Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's fourth video. We're going to have a look at the weather and it said 14 days for today's fourth video. Day 10 will take us to the 14th of February, Valentine's Day. Ooh. And we'll be able to accept out beyond that with Essential FS and ECF Ensembles. They run throughout a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us into the, the beginning of March. I should get on with that for you in a moment. Just say that first video release today was our 6M UK weather forecast. We've also released um, the fourth update for spring. It's a sort of special. And if all of that wasn't enough, Gav's weather study roundup has returned today. As well, so we've got February Sunday roundup for your viewing pleasure. Um, so check that out if you'd like to do that. Talking things like sea surface temperature, normally solar activity, QBO, AO, NEO, etc., etc., etc. So uh, check that out and have a look a little bit later. On. Please like, share, and subscribe, and all day videos and content. You can show everybody for doing that. We need to put on only around seven. That's all seven subscribers to get ourselves to 17.9k. We thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. So close now to 17.9k. Getting ever closer to 18k subscribers as well. How epic would 18k be before we end the winter? Now, talking of subscribers, I put out this post on the community page uh, yesterday afternoon. I'm just gauging opinion at the moment. So, it's a it's a post and a poll. So, it said, just wondering if any of our followers would be interested in a gas weather well, it's meter, but at some point in the future, maybe when we hit 20k subscribers. Do -do -do. Um, so at the moment, the poll with 202 votes is running 88% yes, 12% no. So it looks like a lot of you are up for having a bit of a meet and greet. Obviously, all of the detail will have to be finalised um, on it. If we do it, you know, uh, I'll have to finalise where, we, where we're going to do. I'm going to try and make it. You know, fair for everybody. So, at the moment, I'm sort of thinking of Birmingham, Manchester, some one of the big cities in the centre of the country to make it fair for everybody in terms of travelling. And I've got to sort out, you know, think about venues and, and, and what sort of um, what sort of format it will be. You know, in terms of a meetup, whether it will be a restaurant or a pub or some other venue. Anyway, all of that, all of that's to be determined and to be decided. But at the moment, just gauge your opinion. So, if you if you will be up for um, uh, a meet up uh, with, with with me and you know gas weather vids um then uh, then then go to the community page you know voting poll and uh and let's at the moment <coughs> excuse me at the moment as i say yes is uh is way 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 ahead i'm actually surprised how many people w would be up for uh, a gas weather vids meet up um but it was something i thought about doing for a while you know i did it would have been nice to have done something like that at 10k but of course when we got to 10k it was january 2021 and we was right in the middle of lockdown then so that that was a complete non-starter then then it just went by the wayside you know so at uh, 20k it might be that might be but a, a nice a nice period have a meet up but anyway let me know what you think in the in the page it's like two community posts down so um let go to the community page or community tab have a look and uh and uh and, and we'll see what happens uh, right, okay, let's start the video then. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. Hope you're having a lovely Sunday afternoon. Let's start the video. I'm going to begin <coughs> give me with uh, stratospheric developments, of course. So the blue colours here are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA over the Arctic and the North Pole on the latest GFS run. As we run through, we can see that in around sort of five or six days' time, we get a warming of the stratosphere beginning to appear here over Russia and into Siberia as well. How far does this GFS run go with that? Well, it does develop it into quite a significant warming over northern Russia, penetrating into Siberia as well, causing a displacement of them of the polar vortex. Again, not splitting the PB, just can't see, can't seem to split the PB properly this year, can we? But it does look like a very significant warming. I think if that came 
off, it would reverse its own wing at 10 HPM would be classified as a major sudden satisfactory warming event, even if it's only leading to a displacement rather than split of the polar vortex. So, still interesting stratospheric developments. The uh, latest from weather is current terms of the zone of wind looks like that. So, again, the green lines are the GFS ensembles. You see a lot of the ensemble members are going for a technical SSW, they're a reversal of Zoda wings. Um, and again, very, very similar to what happened uh, last year. So I spoke about this in yesterday, 10 to 14 day. Uh, but that's, la that's last year's Zoda wing. Um, you know, how, how Zoda wings performed last season. So again, it was around the middle of February, but we set the Zoda wing in traverse, put on the GFS ensembles. It's virtually, virtually identical scenario, really, isn't it? Quite remarkable that's how, it, how it's happening. If it comes off almost to the day, we have got some some ensemble members are going for a record-breaking weakening of Zoda Wings as well, taking uh, the straight bomb Zoda Wings down to a record-breakingly weak uh, level. Obviously, they are outliers, but you know, quite a few uh, members of the GFS ensembles now are going for reversal of Zoda Wings in around 10 days' time. So it will be very, very interesting to keep an eye on that and see what happens. Could have big impacts for the spring. Right, uh, sensing temperature continuing to move upwards. We're now sitting at 8.3, which is 4.5 degrees above 61 to 1990 average. That is provisional to yesterday, to the 3rd of February. That's going to carry on rising even more, I think, over the next uh, day or so. That might just about hit 9 degrees. Not sure if we'll quite do that. But uh, then we could be in for a rather entertaining CT collapse. So these were GFS up rare temperature precipitation ensembles and a couple of weeks of red line here is the 30 year upper air temperature average for oxford um you can see starting off above average would be upper air temperatures through the next few days but from about midweek onwards or second half week onwards they're going to start sliding away becoming quite cold into uh next weekend and then beyond that as we get into the middle and second half of february we've got a lot of scattered viral ensemble members up here colder ensemble members down there so it's all to play for really as we get into the second half of month precipitation wise could be a lot of dry weather for the next two or three days then turning much more unsettled later on this week and into uh, next week um they're looking rather unsettled into the extent as well how snow road looking for oxford so we do see some snow spikes there in uh, oxford particularly around the uh, 10th to the 12th of february I mean, it's not a huge number of them, but there might be some snow to come for Oxford. Let's go a bit further north. Damantry, but it looks a little bit snowier, if anything. And a bit further north would still to uh, Nottingham, where it looks even better for snow. So it is one of those situations where the further north you go, the greater the chance of snow. But nevertheless, there is a possibility of some snow there next weekend into Oxford. Temperature anomalies from the 4th to 12th of uh, February now going colder than average in the northern half of the country, still above average for England and Wales. I expect these anomaly charts to trend colder though over the next few days. Notice most of Scandinavia and Nordic regions again plunging down into the freezer. So it's been a very cold Nordic and Scandinavian winter and the cold after a respite is uh, definitely coming back there in the next week. Precipitation anomalies from the 4th to 12th of February are uh, above average, uh, above average precipitation. If it's cold enough, there could be some snow with that in the northern half of the country in particular. Latest win from that from Earth, no school dot net shows that for the time being, we're still drawing up those mild, very mild uh, wings from the Azores, from the southwest. But if we drag the map down, Check this out. Northerlies are lurking. They're getting a little bit further southwards through the Norwegian Sea. There is a, a frontal system through there that will be pushing southwards through the course of this week, gradually introducing those colder winds from the north. Okay, I <laughs> start going with charts, eh, to them. It's our latest UK bet. You're a road talking big night on Wednesday. So, cold air beginning. I'm talking about what I was just talking about. I uh, was speaking what I was just talking about. Cold air beginning to dig in. It's almost like it's planned this, isn't it? Cold, cold air beginning to dig in uh, from the north along the cold front, but through here. And uh, winds turning into colder northerly direction. Let's see what the UK bet does after that thing. So, low pressure starts gathering in, uh, gathering in, in the Atlantic, moving our way. So, so uh, Friday, where's, where's Friday? 
Thursday to Friday, bring outbreaks of rain in from off the Atlantic. So that could turn to snow in the northern half of the country. And then the secondary low takes a more southerly trap Friday into Saturday. So that one's going down towards the channel turning wind into the east across the whole country that uh, might bring some snow even to more southern areas as we go into next weekend we finish up with the uk met looking like that putting in a cold north east wind with low pressure to our east and south so you would suspect that would bring in at the very least, some snow showers on those easterly winds. Uh, Icon again is introducing that northerly into uh, Wednesday. And then Thursday, low pressure starts coming in from off the Atlantic. Quite a long way north of that area of low pressure means that any snow Thursday to Friday is mostly restricted up across Scotland. And it uh, takes until the end of next weekend, really, to send, send that low pressure south. So Icon is taking a long while to move that low. The way, but eventually does so and starts to pull in colder winds from the northeast. The KMA is looking like that again. In comes that area of low pressure through um, Thursday and it's Friday as well. Um, it takes a while to shift that low pressure away to south. Eventually, it does so though. So as we go through next weekend, it does turn colder from uh, the north and high pressure sort of building across and to the north of the country, sending the high pressure towards Scandinavia and then sitting it over the top of the country. Mostly dry, calm and frosty there on that particular JMA run from next weekend. From next weekend, there was probably not a lot of snow with that. This is how the GFS midnight run is looking. Again, bringing low pressure off the Atlantic through Thursday. A bit further southwards with that area, area of low pressure. Compared to Icon, for example, means that Northern Ireland, Northern England, Southern Scotland probably gets the snow there Thursday into Friday rain down in the south, of course. Then below, sort of pushing through the country, that keeps the cold air trapped in the far north of the country until like Saturday to Sunday. And then those northerly winds start pushing southwards, and they'll be bringing the cold air southwards with them. Heading up towards day 10, high pressure building over into the east country, low pressure trying to come in off the Atlantic. Winter cover like the south, south beach, but it would still be cold, I think. Uh, with that, and then high pressure strongly takes over, really, as you go to extended range and start pushing back northwards again with winds turning into a northerly northeast. So that's a look at the end of the GFS midnight run. High pressure still over top of the country, mostly dry, cold, and frosty. This is how the GFS 6 Z is looking again, a bit further southwards with that area of low pressure still. Actually, compared to big night run from Thursday into Friday. So, Northern England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, probably at risk of some snow. Thursday to Friday rain down in the south, of course. The low finally clears away Saturday to Sunday, opens the door to those cold and northerly north east. And then the GFS sits there, builds a Scandinavian high. So, this is a different scenario, but a beautiful Scandinavian high setting up there by day 10. Valentine's Day, pulling the wind into those cold, very cold easterly. Look at this, proper, proper easterly there uh, around the middle part of February. Notice we can keep the ice bars out, so allegation that could be bringing some rain, probably snow actually, in from the east. Um, that's some sort of trough or something, but so pushing through on those east winds. And then retrogression, which GFS sits there, run has it all. We then see signs of rawr, 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 retrogression of the high pressure up to Greenland, and uh, all looking very interesting anyway. So so lots of cold potential with the GFS 6 uh, This is a precipitation forecast based on that GFS 6 run. Oh, uh, it really is Tuesday, but the cold front starts coming southwards, bringing band of rain. Bit of an undercut being suggested on that now. So that's a bit of a change. Bit of an undercut of the cold air along that front brings risk of some significant snow into parts of Northern England, maybe, on Tuesday. Mostly rain further south as it pushes southwards. A little bit of snow possible, perhaps, on the back edge into the mid but not much happening there. Then Wednesdays are mostly quiet today. Snow showers in the far north, rain gathering in the uh, southwest. So as we go from Wednesday to Thursday, that wet, wet, that's wet weather pushes north into cold air. Snow event for northern England, northern Ireland, and southern southeastern parts of Scotland there on uh, Thursday. More wet weather piling up from the south later on. It's Thursday across England and Wales. 
Uh, that again tend to significant so if we summon Scott Dorp Lies and Dorp Ring, that's where the battle lies definitely drawn on this uh, GFS six Z run, uh, isn't it? That's Friday, so uh, rain and significant snow for northern regions as well. And then into next weekend, we start putting in those northeasty winds, so all of the rain and snow gets out of the way. But we would what this doesn't show is that we'll probably probably be bring in snow showers on those northeast winds the model will struggle to uh, pick those out uh St. Tony Carl Ben into the following week. Then the wind goes into the east. We're drawing that proper sort of easterly. And uh again we see, well, look at that significant snow coming in on those easterly winds. That's the 15th of February. That's when we've got that little allegation in the ice about so that's what can happen if you bring a trough or something through. That's there. Uh that's what's happening there. You know, there's there's a there's a allegation in the ice bar, uh, kinky ice bars actually. <laughs> uh, just there. Um, and that's like a that's like a, a, a trough or a, or a front or even a little area of road pressure that's pushing in on those east winds. And the upshot of that is to bring this persistent and heavy snow in from the east. It's been a long, 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 long time since we've had you know uh, heavy outbreaks of persistent snow coming in on on an, on a long fetch easterly wind. It's years and years and years since we've had that. Um, but that GFS six. Everyone does that. It's a long way off, of course, 15th of February, so almost certainly won't verify, but nice little bit of eye candy there. And staying wintry, really, until the very end of GFS 6, everyone, when it starts to turn uh, a little bit less cold. Right, that's that one done. If you're enjoying the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment? And let us know what you think about this and all of our video. Don't forget to tell friends about Gals Web. So thanks so much, everybody, for doing that. Seven subscribers are going to get us to um, 17.9k. Surely, surely you know seven people who'd be up for joining Gals Web events, you know, subscribing to Gals Web events. Surely you must do. Don't you? Do you? I would. But anyway, if, if you could tell your friends and fans to subscribe, uh, get us the seven we need to um, to get <laughs> to get to seventeen point nine k, and then we're just got we've just got one hundred subs left to get to eighteen k. How epic would that be? Thank you so much, everybody. Right, GM again, bring that carbon samples on Wednesday. Band of rain, hand samples, and introducing some colder air from the north. A low pressure started to come in. A bit further south was with that area of low pressure, Thursday to Friday, means the show risk with that is probably going to be more Northern Ireland, Northern England, perhaps North Wales and the North Midlands. Um, now, a little bit further south was there, the snow potential, I think, at the end of the week. But low then gets out of the way into the North Sea, pulls the wind into a colder northerly next weekend. And then heading up towards daytime, um, we have this area of low pressure punching through from Arthur Downs. It's probably a big mild sector coming in with that, but as that clears away east was rich again, or a block again, builds around Iceland, and the wind goes back into colder northerly once more. And then we've got the ECM at WF. Now check this out, the ECM this morning, set the catamount with pigeons. So have a quick butchers up this, everybody. Again, cold front comes samples on Wednesday, introducing that colder air. And then low pressure is even further samples with the ECM, on Thursday, look what happens. It actually becomes a channel low. Wow, goodness gracious me. Channel low with the ECM Midnight Run. And that means that the snow risk there is going to be through Wales, the Midlands, East Anglia. If it went any further south, the snow risk would be into the far south country. And of course, if, if below was to eventually go into France, though, if it was eventually to go there, <laughs> then we have a repeat of what happened in January. We don't get any snow, but we, we stay cold. Um, the, uh, if, if that happened, at least this time, we, we would be bringing in like an easterly, though. So even if we don't get snow from below, if below's in Biscay and France, we would still get easterly winds that could bring in snow showers and whatnot. Anyway, very, very cold and wintry looking at uh, ECM for the end of the, uh, end, end of the week and into next weekend as well. Low pressure stuck across the south. Cold air wraps around the area of low pressure. All sorts of funny games would be possible with that area of low there in the south of the southeast. Eventually that gets out of the way 
by day 9 and 10. High pressure building both to west and to the north and bringing him a win from an easterly or a north easterly direction. That brings snow showers into eastern parts of the country there by day 10. Now have a look at the precipitation forecast based on that ECM midnight run. So down comes the cold front on Wednesday and uh, bringing outbreaks of rain across the country. Then we're into those cold winds and in comes a low pressure through Thursday. Now look at this big snow event through Wales, the Midlands, just getting to Northern England over to the East Anglia. I'll be buried in the towers with that. <laughs> rain down in the uh, south of the country. Uh, Strobus goes a little bit further southwards there into Friday. Um, well, it gets out of the way. And then another snow event. Uh, Saturday, this is that low pressure pushing back north again on Saturday. A very, very snowy ECM run through Wales and the Midlands, I have to say. That's where the battle line is drawn on the ECM run, Wales and the Midlands. You'll notice that the ECM is further south with, this, with these lows compared to all other models. But we do know that over time, these lows do tend to trend southwards, these slider lows um, in battleground scenarios. So let's wait and see what the other model output does over the next 24 hours or so. Um, now eventually that low pressure gets out of the way into the continent, and then we're going into those uh, northeasterly, easterly winds. They bring lots of snow showers into eastern parts of the country. So if that easterly was to be maintained beyond Valentine's, then uh, we could start dragging in snow showers from the east. It's interesting. Very, very interesting, isn't it, again today? Um, right, these are the options on the table within the East um, Ensemble today for day 10. Gets us to the 14th of February. Actually, before we do that, let's see if we have a look at the options with that low. So, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Um, now what's the what's the date that the ECM has that low down for sale? So, let's say the 9th. Okay, let's try and find the options within the ECM ensembles for the 9th, which is going to be just there. Okay, so these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for the 9th of February with that area of low pressure. That is Friday. So 21 members of the ECM ensembles have below pressure further northward. So that's in line with all of the other model output, really. And it means that the coldest of the air is really in the northern half of the country. We have 16 with below pressure again through the country, but perhaps a little bit further south was uh, with that. And then we have 14, which includes the operational one, with that low pressure further southward still. And that is how we allow uh, the cold air to come in from the northeast. So the ECM is not the ECM operational run with that southerly, more southerly trading load. Probably not all that well supported by its ensemble, actually. But there is very little in it. You look at look at all three of the options, and, and you know, they all look much of a muchness, really. Um, no, uh, so yeah, it's like a very, it's like a fraction. Which fractions this of? Um, uh, in terms of a global model, you know, of, of how far south that area of low pressure is going to be. Right, anyway, let's move on. So, these are the options on the table within the ECM on top of day 4, day 10. Gets us to the 14th of February. 20 members of the ECM ensembles have a blocking area of high pressure from uh, Greenland, Scandinavia, about to bring the wind in from a cold easterly direction. We have 18 with high pressure in the North Atlantic towards Iceland to Greenland. Low pressure is over the continent. And again, with that, we will bring the wind in from a cold northeasterly direction. And then we have 13, including the control and the operational run. Perhaps seems to be a bit of retrogression, but basically, high pressure is blocking there. Um, within the normal latches, and again, bringing the wing from the north east. So, to be honest, all options are looking cold at day 10, which is not a scenario we get all, all that often, to be honest. Only very, there is some sort of mild option going on. And then, in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 19th of February, 15 members of the ECM. Ensembles with a large blocking air of high pressure around Green Iceland. Winds coming in from a cold northeasterly direction. We have 13 with high pressure again in the uh, North Atlantic going up towards Greenland. Trough of low pressure is over Scandinavia, Northern Europe. Winds again coming in from a cold northeasterly direction. With that, we have uh, another 13 with high pressure around Iceland to Greenland. Around that, we bring the wind in from a cold easterly direction. And then we have 
10 with real strong blocking around Greenland. Low pressure is to our south south east. And this will be the snowiest option, I think. This will, could potentially bring lots of snow in from the east with those uh, north east winds. Again, you'll notice that all options, though, within the ECF ensembles at both day 10 and day 14 are looking cold there, which is not something we get very often by any means. So, as I said in yesterday's video, we could well be setting up a prolonged cold spell here. I would not be ruling out the possibility. CFSB2, and then we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do you uh, like, share, subscribe, and share, share, and give that. Always at the end now. So it's a 5 for Bar high tide breakdown. It's a week period. It's the first week period. It takes you the 4th to 10th of February. Oh, the next week sees high pressure. The mild bridge have had recently going over towards the southeast of Europe. So that's where the mild air will be going. For us, we have a block in the North Atlantic and the Trotho of Scandinavia, which starts to turn the wind into a colder northerly. Then we get through the week two, which is going to be the 11th, 17th of February. High pressure then to our east, low pressures in the Med. Down here, we should be bringing the wind from a cold easterly direction with that. I think week three <laughs> will be the 18th to 24th of February. High pressure and building over the top of the country, but sorry to ourselves, so we begin to go a little bit milder there into the last week, uh, like the third week, I should say, of February. And then week four is the 25th of February, 2nd of March, with high pressure over the top of the country. So let's back off its ideas of, of like um, uh, an extended cold period today. So CFS is having a little bit of a wobble. Um, and then lastly, uh, this is how CFS is looking overall for March. Latest seven hundred millibar height, height anomaly rent, but have been changed daily. Today's idea is for blocking area of high pressure around Greenland. Ice and low pressure is to our south. Winds coming in from a cold easterly direction. The temperature anomaly shows no signal, but I reckon we'll have a colder than average month. And the precipitation anomaly is drier than average to our north and wetter than average to the south. We should wait and see about that. We're done! If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our bids. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals World Vids. We thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Seven subs for 17.9k. Can we do it? 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 Um, we shall see. Uh, and then we're up. Well, then we'll get 17.9k. We're firmly pushing on to. 18k. Right, okay, so it's all looking very exciting, isn't it? We'll be keeping you updated over the next. You'll notice I've got my mojo back the last couple of days. I'd like a bit of cold weather on the horizon to get your mojo. <laughs> get your mojo back. You know, it's nothing to do with that. It's just that I'm feeling a lot better health wise than I was a, a week or two back. But, um, yeah, so so a lot to keep it on, a lot to look forward to. I'll be keeping you updated, of course, at Gals Weathers over the next few days. Now, there's no live stream tonight. I'd normally be live streaming all of this on a Sunday. But um, there's no live stream tonight because it's my brother's birthday. So uh, I'm off for a bit of dinner uh, with family tonight and have a bit of family time. But we will be live again on uh, Wednesday. So uh, if you're looking forward to a live stream later on, um, then, uh, then that's coming up on Wednesday. I I think Mark Vogan, though, might be live streaming at 4pm. So I've heard rumours along the grapevine. But uh, lovely Mark might be uh, going live on his channel at uh, 4 p.m. You can find uh, Mark Vogan, Mark Vogan's channel in the um, recommended channels module, actually, uh, on the Gals Road YouTube homepage. I'll probably drop the uh, link to Mark's channel in the description here as well. So um, if Mark's live at 4, I, I'm not entirely sure if he will, but if Mark's live at 4, I should have checked with him first, should I, before I did this. But if Mark is live at 4, then, uh, then, then, then check him out, and uh, I'm sure he'll have an interesting stream up for you but i shall be live streaming on wednesday anyway at 6 p.m and uh, tonight as i say i'm having a night off just uh, coming up tomorrow at 6 p.m uk we for a guard up here 10 to 14 day as well so uh with the uh, content keeps on coming you know, enjoy the rest of your sunday and uh for this one though that's all for now and thanks for watching